Oregonian. Kelly, on the scheduling front, uh, with yet another change, um, was there any talk of moving the Oregon State finale to either today or next week? And if not, then is all this, supposedly this AD's meeting on Monday, they were talking about extra games in Vegas uh, to make up for those who haven't, you know, with games to make up. What's your understanding of just <laughs> who, who are you playing and when other than Stanford on Monday? Let's put it that way. James, you are nothing if not persistent, young man. Um, I try. And every week, uh, I, I don't have any more for you. We, th we have had discussions. Uh, I, the, the conference office, I, I, she reached out to me. We've talked on a, on a few occasions. I think she wanted to talk with every coach and get their thoughts on end of season protocol, tournament, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think the discussions are going on. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know yet if we're going to have a tournament, like a normal tournament format, or if we're going to go down there and play multiple games, make up games. Um, all I know is we don't play Cal tomorrow and Stanford game is still on the LA trip. I'm assuming still a go. And then that last week when we play Oregon state, I think the reason they told us or they, they had us play our travel partners that last week is so that we could pick up some games. Now we're down five, so we're not going to be able to pick up five. I think that's going to be at the directive of the, conference i don't think i can say hey i want to play you guys i think that's going to come from them and i don't know if that will be one or two or none you know i i, I don't know i'm hoping at least one and i would just be to, willing to travel just want a clarification also kelly because you had mentioned after the other game at the uc davis that you were talking about possibly adding are are you boxed in by the 22 have you reached your limit or are they actually pulling off the 22 because of all these postponements across the league? Well, it was 25 games and I've been to league, league games, league games. Yeah. League games, 22. Uh, no, I've been told that I def we're not going to make up all five. So I was told by the PAC 12 that I could go out and schedule additional games if possible outside competition. And, uh, and I'm still working on a couple now looking at how things are playing out. I'm not sure there's going to be really any time. And after the way we kind of put that UC Davis game together, and I think we suffered both against Arizona and then against UC Davis, I'm not so sure piecemealing something at the last minute is all that beneficial either. Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. Kelly, what would be your personal preference? Would you rather make up as many of the 22 game round robin regular season as possible or have a semi-normal postseason tournament? Listen, I could go either way. You ask me which I preferred. Just get me three games down there somehow. You know, if that's in a tournament format, and then once if we're eliminated or other teams are eliminated at some point, allow for some so-called consolation games to be played earlier in the day. Um, uh, at worst, that, you know, and, and perhaps even get down there on a Sunday or a Monday and try to squeeze in three games, maybe even a fourth for those that want to opt in for that many. So I, I think it's still, you know, up in the air. We, we just, we don't know. And, and everybody's going to come at it a different way. You know, I've talked with coach Van de Veer and, and uh, you know, Lynn Roberts and J.R. Payne. There's, there's some coaches that just kind of want to get done. There's others. We have several schools that are in the middle of the conference that could use maybe a, a, a quality win. And uh, by playing an extra game or two might be able to get that those bubble teams. I think those that are on top, there's about four of us, you know, for us, it's getting games and getting experience. I don't think we're enhancing our resume necessarily. So everybody's going to come at it a different way. That's why I feel for the PAC 12 uh, officials, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to end up doing. Eric Scopel, 247 sports. Coach, you've had a couple, obviously, instances, five now games postponed. How, like, how, how does this one hit you guys? You guys Are you guys more used to it now so it's easier? Or does it ever get easier? I mean, kind of what's the, what's the emotional state for this team after, obviously, a tough game on Monday, hoping to bounce back on, on Friday, and that game doesn't get played? 
Well, we want to play and they, they, they want to play because if we don't play, that means we practice, Eric. I'm not a whole lot of fun in practice. And, uh, you know, and any kid would rather play game. They'd, they'd want to play five games a week. Um, you know, we had good fortune, uh, good success against Cal last time. And that would have broken up what is going to end up being three top 10 ranked teams right in a row in Arizona, Stanford, and then at UCLA. So, um, you know, that's a tough stretch for a team that's kind of struggling right now. And, um, you know, so I think anything would have helped. But, hey, listen, I, I, I feel for Cal. I think they've done a, a great job managing this whole thing all year. They've, had, they've been down in numbers. And Sh Coach Sharman has done an awesome job. And those kids have played hard uh, under the circumstances. And they have good attitudes. And just bless their hearts, they just haven't had the numbers to play. In Herrera, NBC. Uh, Kelly, looking at your last game against uh, Stanford, uh, Sydney Parrish had a nice game off the bench. How was she able to be successful, and what what will you uh, look to her on uh, on Monday? Yeah, Sydney played well. I think during that stretch, she was actually playing quite well. Um, yeah, we need her to continue to you know to be maybe an X factor for us. Uh, you know, she she's just so aggressive, gets a hand on a lot of balls defensively, gets to the free throw line. And that game hit a couple of threes that, that were important. Um, we actually played relatively well down there against them last time. And, and just a couple of plays here and there and kind of a rough third quarter, um, you know, kind of doomed us, but, uh, but we had a chance all the way down to the, to the end of the game. So, uh, you know, we, we need to get that back a little bit. And Sydney's obviously a big part of that. Andrew Hovner, K-E-Z-I. Yeah, Kelly, you know, when we were asking about the, the three-point issues shooting-wise against Arizona, you had said, you know, like they're making them in practice. It's just not translating over into, into the game sometimes. Do you see the postponements and the stoppages as, as maybe a, a part of, of why that is, of, of not being able to build consistency and confidence in game, especially with so many young players? Yeah, this has been perhaps the most challenging year I've ever had as a coach. And that includes years where we just weren't very good, you know, and we're just trying to keep our head above water. The pandemic, it, you know, it, it's over everything. OK, so it, you come at it with that lens. Secondly, a very young team, maybe the youngest team in terms of years of experience uh, in the country. Um, that being said, still players in and out because of COVID, players injured. You know, we actually haven't had the whole team together and playing and practicing is and practicing is as much as anything since the early December. And you look at our first five or six games, we were really good. And, and ever since then, it's just been kind of a, a hodgepodge here and there. So, Andrew, yes, I think anytime you can get into a rhythm, I think that's a great thing when you know that you're going to play Friday and Sunday. Monday's going to be a run, lift and shoot day. Tuesday is our day off. Wednesday's our day we really get after it and practice. You know, that's our full contact day. Thursday's a prep day, game Friday, Saturday prep day, game Sunday. You know, that that routine I think is really important. And you just throw all that out the window this year. There has been no routine. Back to James. Do you know if you'll have uh, Chavez and Maddie on Monday, Kelly? Um, Chavez is out, uh, and um, I'm not sure about Maddie. She's in that uh, the the progression protocols. Is Taylor back in Arizona? Uh, yeah, Taylor had uh, some family uh, matters, and you know it just kind of worked to uh, her advantage and our advantage that that she uh, was able to go home during this COVID. Yeah, yeah, but she's now back. So we're, we're good there. Yeah, she's just got to go go through those same protocols. You know, there's no rush back, and and that's the way it should be. Did, did, last, did she go from Utah? Did she go from Utah there, or did she go Utah home, then there, then back? Yeah, James, I, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to tell you, okay. you know, about that. Well, I mean, journey, you put so. it out there. like So that's why, like, I'm I'm not, you know, Dick Tracy yeah. here, Kelly. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know, and there's – I just – I don't feel comfortable in, in saying where they've been and when. So sure. okay. that's all. And I'm not hiding anything. I just, I don't know if that's my place. Back to Eric. What did you learn from that Stanford game? You mentioned you played well the first time down there. What did you learn and, and what did this team learn? Because it was a game where it was close down to the wire with a really good team. 
I've learned that we're not that far off, you guys. We're really not. You know, I know we're 12 and four. I know we haven't had four losses here in a long time. I get it. Um, and, and we normally are, you know, win our share of those top 10 teams. But the four losses we've had, quite frankly, are all teams that are in the top 10. They're all very good. I look at the Arizona game and, and sure, we didn't, we didn't play our best. But the reality is that's a veteran team and a very good team. And we're making some young mistakes. And I've already kind of chronicled the, the issues that we have. The Stanford game, I think, was um, kind of a microcosm of that. We played well. We hung in there. In the end, we just we didn't make the plays. And a good veteran, solid, well-coached Hall of Fame team, Hall of Fame coach team, you know, made the plays. And um, but but I learned that we're not that far off. And, and there were little things here and there that we uh, you know hopefully have improved and gotten better at. Uh, so that we don't continue to make those those same mistakes. But I'm encouraged, you guys. I really am encouraged. I've just been battling with, you know, our identity. What are we? We're going to go big. We're going to play smash mouth kind of power basketball, or do we want to stick with, you know, what has worked for us in the past, you know, uh, uh, a spread wide open four out uh, emphasize three and ball screen. So, you know, we're, we're still wrestling with that. It's 16 games of the year. We only got a month, month and a half, hopefully two months left. We, we need to quick, quickly figure this out. To Ryan, I gave you more than you asked for there, Big E. Kelly, if memory serves, Sedona, I think one of the games she missed was the Stanford game. Yep. Uh, how does she change that matchup, and how close do you think she is to returning to her early season form? Yeah, still, still a way, still a work in progress. I think she'll definitely help. She'll change the game. Uh, she gives us a, a matchup when they, you know, they've gone with both uh, Brink and. Uh, Belibi or Bellevue, uh together at times so we can match up to that size. Um, just again, it makes us more versatile. We can go small and spread you out or we can go uh, bigger. So, but she's still a work in progress, man. As uh, back to James. To the identity issue, Kelly. Um, and I'm, I'll, I'll reference two players specifically, but I realize it's, it's more than two. It is. Um, but it has seemed like Michael has been pressing a bit in that when she's shooting, she's shooting very hard. The ball is leaving her hands hard. It's, it's going off the backboard more than it did early. And for jazz that she has clearly had a challenge in comfort level being beyond the ball player, as opposed to like, where did, where has the two footed bunny hop gone and can she get it back? Because that was her shot last year. And that's where she was drilling threes and, we haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I think we're all pressing a little bit, bottom line. I just think, you know, and I think with every possession, we feel like, hey, this is the possession that's going to get us going. And and we've kind of put, you know, maybe we're putting a little more pressure on ourselves than, than we should. Uh, I will tell you this, that both Jazz and Taylor are, are in Matthew Knight Arena shooting every morning. And if you uh, uh, doubt that or don't believe me, I'll tell you exactly when to show up. And you'll see them walk across, uh, you know, the, the, the street from wherever they park and, and, and go in the gym. So they're putting in the time. And I'm just uh, convinced and confident that uh, that that will pay off. So uh, um, to answer your question, I, I don't know where it's gone. It's still there. We just got to get it out of them when we're playing those 40 minutes against somebody else. And I'm confident that it will happen, James. Eric Scoble. Have you seen maybe with your freshmen, obviously, has there been like a freshman wall they've run into? It just seems like some of them have had a little bit, Tahina in particular offensively has kind of not been quite herself the last maybe two to three games. I know you guys haven't played a lot, so there's probably a lot of reasons, but have you, you picked up on something with the freshmen? Has the season just kind of been taking a toll on them at all? Yeah, I think all fresh, freshmen uh, not named Paige Beckers uh, hit a wall at some point. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and our freshmen are, you know, are, are the same. The difference is we don't have a, a ton of veterans that can kind of help them through that. You know, they, they rely on other freshmen to kind of help them through and they, they themselves are struggling. So uh, I, I actually think Tahina's played pretty well. She's just uh, come up short on, on some, some shots in the paint. Uh, she's, yeah, I, I just think overall, I think she's played pretty well. I, I, Texted her a, a, uh, about seven or eight games from Sabrina's freshman year. 
some of the numbers she had. And you guys would remember this, those that were around, you know, she had some two for 11 nights and four for 17 nights and uh, high turnovers. And so I just, I sent that to, uh, to Tahina the other day and just to say, hey, listen, it's going to happen. It happens to the best of them. And Sabrina was the best of them. So, you know, uh, and, and those were all from games from mid-January to mid-February. So I think it hit home. Uh, we certainly believe in, in Tahina and I think she's doing a lot more good than, than certainly bad. Um, Hayden. Uh, Kelly, Oregon softball starts their season tomorrow. Baseball starts next week. Track and soccer are underway. Uh, any advice for these coaches as they try to na navigate their season? And, and is it a little different challenge with their rosters being a lot more than, than yours? Yeah, well, I think uh, Coach Vanderveer said it the best. She said, just be flexible. You, you just don't know. You know, you can have your heart set. You can be at, at uh, pregame mill in Salt Lake City, Utah, three and a half hours from tip and get the word games canceled and so is your next game. And, you know, you just got to go with the flow. You know, there's, there's no plan. You know, the best laid plans are, are still going to be disrupted. And that's just kind of the way it is right now. Just make the best of it. And, and I think it's really taught me personally, just live for each day. Just, just be in the moment. And that's all you can really worry about. That's a good question, Hayden. I'm excited to see all of them play, though. To be honest with you, I, I love outdoor sports. I love our track team. And you guys know me. I'm a huge softball fan. I, I never miss a game. I'm a season ticket holder and can't wait to see Coach Waz and his group. So fun times. Um, unless we have any more questions, our last will be from Andrew Hopner. Yeah, Kelly, just to go back to the, the leadership component, you know, the, the, the lack of veterans in massive numbers for you guys from a leadership perspective. What does Taylor's kind of, I guess, in and out nature of, of this season kind of, you know, done for that leadership component, given she's one of, you know, three or four people that have been here for multiple years, been through the rise of, of the program. And I, I know you can be a leader in practice, but being in those games has to also count for something, right? When it comes to, to being a leader out on the floor and having that common presence. Absolutely. And we've missed her. We've missed her. The game she's been out. Uh, we have definitely missed her. There's no question about it. And we need that from her down the stretch. You know, it's kind of ironic. This is her junior year. And, you know, she's never played in an NCAA tournament. You know, last year, of course, was canceled. The year before that, she was injured during our Final Four run. So, yeah, so now we're, you know, that even adds to, to, the, to the pressure she has on her to try and teach these, these young kids. But uh, uh, she's a tremendous teammate. I, I value her... Um, you know, her leadership and, and just her ability to, to, to get us on track. I, we need her back. We need her back. There's no question about it. All right, coach. Uh, no other hands have gone up, so that'll do it. Thank you, coach. Good seeing you guys.